What's happening, fellas? It's Ken Cedar. It's January 26. Big day today for one of my favorite motorcycle companies, Harley Davidson. They're dropping the 2022 product release. I've already seen the uh, Adam Sandoval and a bunch of other YouTubers have leaked pictures of the bike that they're really excited about, and for great reason. The 2022 FXLRS T, the touring model. It looks like a traditional Harley Davidson FXR or Dyna. It has the FXRT fairing. It has bags on it, so you can't tell that it's a mono shock. And it basically, all of the objections I've had about, let me put it to you this way Harley stocks went down the toilet. They have, in my opinion, and the sales have plummeted Harley Davidson in the last 10 years. Harley Davidson hasn't had a product I've been excited about since they discontinued the Dyna Lowrider S, the last new Harley I bought in 2017. This new bike has got me absolutely stoked. When I saw the video, Adam dropped it, and I saw some of the pictures, did the research. I'm tempted to go buy some Harley stock because I think their stock's gonna go up. I think it's gonna have that much of an impact on the company. They're finally listening to us, the people that spend our hard-earned money on the bikes. I'm not ready for a dresser. Well, let's face it, we own the, the motorcycle shop, we own the museum. If I wanted a dresser, we, we could we could have one, but I may be old and uh, I just don't, the road glide is too big of a bike. I wanna ride wheelies, I wanna do burnouts. I'm a dirt bike rider at, at heart. Most of you guys that watch our channel, we're known probably more for two-stroke motorcycles and motocross and off-road and vintage trail bikes than we are for Harleys. But if you look, um, listen, I've been going to Daytona every year since 1990. That's 31 years straight. And every year I've gone down there, I've had two bikes in my trailer. I've had a Harley Davidson and I've had a Japanese motocross bike. So I go down there to ride dirt bikes, race motocross, hair scrambles, enduros, um, take the Harleys, and they're in their performance Harleys. I have a turbocharged 150 horsepower Dyna in the back of the trailer, and there's not a single new Harley made. I trade this for uh, other than this, this new lowrider sport touring. The bikes, the Harleys, I've always gravitated to. My first one I bought in 1990 was an 87 FX LRC. It was a blue limited edition Harley Davidson lowrider, big twin. And then from there, I bought a 1993 lowrider sport. And that was one of my favorite Harleys I've ever had, one of the best handling Harleys I've ever had. And if you watch the channel, I've had literally dozens of FXRs come through the shop. I like restoring them, like mod modifying them. My forever bike, which is a bike that I I basically told Junior when I die, this is not basically, I, I told Junior, this bike's yours when I die, is my 1990 Lowrider 89 cubic inch, uh, built by Hillside Motors. Um, it's got all in shocks, uh, two inch over, legend forks. Uh, everything's been done. I want my Harleys to handle it good and ride good. This new, back to the low, so that's what I like. So that's why I haven't been excited because Harley hasn't had, in my opinion, a performance big twin until they came out with this one. What's, what's performance about it? Well, it's 117 cubic inches. It's got triple disc brakes. It's got upside down forks. It's got, take a look at the fairing. It's a modern replica version of the FX LR, of the FXRT. I think I represent the typical demographic of the Harley rider. I'd say it, but it's 55 plus, most of them. But Harley's got a bike now that John Adamy, that junior, that the, um, the, the 35 and under crowd is gonna be interested in. Why? Because it's a performance bike. It's 117 cubic inches stock. Um, they're they're uh, easily modified, six-speed transmission. You can easily put a, a kid on that bike and, and be pumping out 130 horsepower with a mountain of torque, and it has that typical Harley sound. I've always been a Harley guy. My dad rode Harleys. Matter of fact, my dad used to go down to Florida to purchase Harleys and bring them up north here to, to, to sell them for, for a profit. Same thing I'm doing now. I'm down here in Florida. Uh, Christy and I say hello, Christy. Hi, how you doing all? <laughs> we're, on a, uh, we're on a motorcycle purchasing trip. How many bikes have we bought since we left three weeks ago? Oh God, 60 something? I, actually, it's up to eight. It was, it was, it was, it was, it was, it was at 69. I had to text Ronnie Mack when we hit 69, but we're at 83 bikes. So I'm doing the same thing Pops was doing, but, but I got a team behind me, Junior. We got you know, we've been doing this for generations. So, um, Harley is in the blood. I was really kind of sad because Christy and I, when we go on these motorcycle purchasing trips, what, what do we do? What shops do we stop at? We always stop Christy at every Harley, Harley dealer. dealer. And, and, and what do we walk out saying? There were no bikes that we liked. Yeah, <laughs> nothing that we that we wanted to buy. 
I'm even considering buying one of these Harley Dynas and raffling it off. The reason we haven't dropped the raffle yet is we ordered two 2022 um, uh, aluminum frame AJ, GOAT 500 from AJ Wagoner, and I'm not sure when they're gonna be done. He's having trouble getting the parts, so we've missed like four months of the raffle here. So I, I, I think we've, we've come to the conclusion we're gonna raffle off the 2022 CRF 450 Works Edition, and also, I'm seriously considering if I can get one, one of these Dyna Lowriders, uh, the, the Touring Edition that I'm talking about. So if you're interested in buying raffle tickets on one of these, let me know. I want a Harley that I can jump a curb with, that I can ride wheelies with, and that's another reason I really like the Sportsters. If you follow our channel, I've done a shitload of Iron Hit Sportsters. My favorite classic, all-time favorite Harley Davidson, uh, style-wise, is the 1977 XLCR Cafe Racer. We have one in the museum. Christy doesn't, uh, and Junior, and everybody wants that to be a forever bike too. It's it's actually on our logo. If you look yes. at the museum logo, hopefully Junior can drop a picture in the museum logo. That's our logo bike, the 77 Cafe Racer. Why? Because it looks badass. It's a classic, it has a cafe look. I think if Harley did an XLCR Cafe Racer replica on, on their new Sportster chassis or, or the new uh, Lowrider, low rider, cool. they would, I think they would sell a lot of them. So hats off to Harley. Um, Watch, you watch, after the release of this new bike, they're gonna get a shitload of orders and the stock's gonna go up. The one thing I think would kill it if, if the price is too high, if they could price this thing affordably under, like say 18,000, I think they would sell a ton of these. It's gonna be good for the for the, uh, for the the aftermarket, uh, you know, exhausts, um, tires, shocks, lots of upgrades. Uh, the aftermarket engine will be good for all those vendors. It'll be good for the dealers. And I think it's gonna breathe a lot of life into the Harley product line. The the, the um, FX LRT, the new LRST has uh, longer travel suspension uh, on the rear. You can see in the photos that were dropped that there's a, a, a the tire is far farther down. You can see more of the tire in the fender. It's not a low, it's not a low, real low riding bike. It's set up a little taller, uh, longer travel front suspension, triple disc brakes like a shotgun style over under exhaust uh the gunmetal gray paint that i saw looked good I'm, I'm not sure what the other paint options are i'm thinking traditional black might be the way to go but i haven't seen them they're dropping the video today uh, it's going to be exciting to see what happens exciting time to be a harley rider i've got my turbo now even my trailer if you look behind do you see the trailer behind i'm not sure if they can see it <laughs> you can see uh the trailer behind us is our trailer let me see if i can see it in, in our it's even in the rear view. Can you see it? Our trailer is painted black and orange Harley Davidson colors, okay? Um, it has a Harley logo on the back. You know, we definitely, and there's a Kawasaki KLR 650 in there too. We always we always travel, when Christy and I travel with a Japanese enduro bike so we can ride on and off road and ride on the beaches and we always travel with a Harley, so. But up until now, there hasn't been a new Harley I've been interested in in five years. I've been thinking about getting a Rogue Glide, but I'm like, you know, they're too cumbersome. Uh, just not, you know, they have the new bagger. You have to do so many mods on them to make them the kind of bike that I want, which is, which is a uh, bike you can drag the pegs around the corners, do hole shots, do wheelies, ride it like a CR500. Harley's got that bike now. Stay tuned. It's an exciting time to be a Harley rider. The other thing I'm really excited about is the FXRT Ferry. They have an option We'll drop, hopefully Junior dropped the photo in here uh, uh, to get a Rockford Fosky stereo system on there, which are, the, are pretty good, the one Harley's have for $9.99, under a grand, and it fits, it's designed by the engineers at the factory to fit perfectly in that fairing. Uh, if you, um, there's a guy who has a YouTuber, I forget his name, uh, Lowrider Brooklyn or FXR uh, Brooklyn, he has a 2017 Lowrider S. He put the FXRT fairing on it. So Harley's basically seen what are the, the one percenters riding what are the hardcore harleys riding what are the youtubers that are really into harleys doing and they've been putting these it cost about three grand to retrofit an fx lr i mean fx rt fairing on there and then adding the stereo that's another thousand dollars so and when you do the aftermarket ones the fit and finish isn't as good as a production bearing and to have a, a production factory installed gauge pack uh and fairing and stereo was huge if you look at the placement of the speedometer, they put the speedometer, you don't want it on the gas tank. Who's gonna look down and basically looking at your crotch while you're driving a motorcycle going fast? 
And why do you look at your speedometer? You don't look at your speedometer when you're doing 20 or 30. You look at your speedometer and doing 80 when you pass the top to wonder if you're gonna get a ticket. You want the speedometer in your line of sight, in your line of vision, and that's where they put it on this bike. They put it in between, on top of the handlebars, analog, it's an analog um, speedometer with, I think, a digital um, tachometer. But the, the bars look right. They're very easy to put taller risers. I, for myself, would like to put like a six inch riser on the bars because I'm six two and some of the highway pegs. I don't want forward control because I want to ride wheelies and do hole shots and uh, ride the thing like a dirt bike. So you want the pegs directly underneath you the way they were on the 2017 Dyna Lowrider Sport. So, um, with and then put your highway pegs. So, once you get cruising, you got another spot so your legs don't get cramped in and you're comfortable for the long haul. Basically, all that thing needs is a comfy seat for Christy, right, honey? That's right. And, and, <laughs> and, a, and a backrest so I don't fly off. And a backrest so she doesn't fly off when I'm banging gears and riding wheelies. So, they have a, I'm sure Harley's gonna have a quick detach backrest and we have one on our, Dyna. we have a CVO Dyna, that's our daily rider, 2007 CVO Dyna, turbocharged, uh, with a contrast turbo and a built motor by the horsepower man George Serjowski at Maroney Harley Davidson built my motor. The thing's badass. Um, doesn't have a stereo, doesn't have the big fairing, has a small removable fairing. But one of the things we really like about it is I, I've got the uh, Leatherman removable saddlebags. We're actually a dealer for Leatherman. And uh, I have those on my FXR and I have those on my Dyna. With the bags, you can pack it full of stuff. It's not a touring bike but it's a sport touring bike with the bags and the backrest. We have a removable leather backpack, a big one, that, that has as much storage as the um, CVO road, road glide road, uh, backpack does or, or uh, luggage luggage uh, rack. Um, so, and it's removable. It, it's big, but when we're going on a trip, we, um, right honey, we can, uh, yes. pre you can pretty much pack everything with that bag, right? Oh, yeah. We, we've gone uh, to Americade with everything packed on the bike. So with, with a with a back rest and luggage rack, you can put that big bag on the back. But when you want to go riding with the boys, ripping ripping uh, ripping around town and uh, do some sport riding, the bag comes right off and the saddle bags come right off. That's the same thing you can have with this new lowrider touring edition. It's a sport touring bike. It's basically a Swiss Army knife. You could ride cross country on it. You could do stunt riding on it. You can go back roads burning on it. You can set it up for the drag strip and guess what? Trask has a turbo on it. So if you want a 200 horsepower Harley, uh, call up the boys at Trask, drop drop a turbo on there, and you've got yourself an absolute rocket ship. The, the sky's the limit. Harley Davidson has the stage one, two, three, and four kits. You can put easily a stage four kit, uh, have it covered under warranty at Harley. I think it's a 134 cubic inch, which it'd be putting down, I believe they're in the 130 horsepower range, naturally aspirated, which is insane, because my turbo one, my, my turbo 110 is putting down 150. Um, so with the turbo charge, the new, the new 117 cubic inch, I'm pretty sure it'd be in the 170 to 200 range. So the sky's the limit with the modifications on this thing. Um, this is, in my opinion, the next forever bike that Harley's got on the market. A bike you can buy and you don't need to buy another one. You might get bored, uh, you might see something different, but there, there won't be anything much better than this coming out from Harley in a while because this is the recipe that works. Just look at any of the one percenter clubs or, or, or the, the serious uh, sport, uh, sport riders and stunters and long distance Harley riders, they've got the FXRT fairing, they've got the leather remove, the leather bags uh, or the hard bags on the back, and they've got a backrest and a decent seat and a long travel suspension. Harley Davidson, hats off, giving the riders what we want once again. Get your order in, they're gonna go fast, trust me. It's a great day to be a Harley rider and a great day to be American. God bless America. And I'm here to bless all these bikes. These bikes have Thunder in them so that nobody kill themselves in them. Thank you, Father. Uh, Father Bwachi came all the way from Ghana. Uh, 
And uh, it's quite a long ways to bless these bikes for us today, and I'm really grateful. And if you want to get your bike blessed, come to the bike blessing, April 12th. He will be here blessing the motors. Thank you, Father. Thank God you, bless Ken. You. Thank you for your good work. Thank you.